the ASM artist. Hey, what's going on, guys? It's Matt here. Uh, I guess I always say it's the ASM artist here, but my name's Matt, for those of you who don't know. It's kind of cool. You guys often just address me as Matt in the comments, and it's really cool because it's like we're all a bunch of friends. Um, it's pretty early in the morning, so I, my voice, I think, is a little bit deeper. I'm just going to keep going with this. I just started off the video kind of talking like a radio announcer, so... Yeah, how's it out there on the airwaves, everybody? <laughs> yeah, uh, I got new, some new glasses as well, so uh, let me know what you think of those guys. I think they look pretty nice, and they're great for uh, filming, too, because I paid the extra money to get uh, not only the, the blue light filter, because I'm always editing on my computer, but also like an anti-reflecting. Like, you can still see it a little bit, but it's not nearly as bad as my old glasses. It looks it looks really great when I'm filming. It's not like it's distracting. And uh, I can see a lot better now because those glasses I had for like two years and the prescription was old. But uh, obviously I have a new backdrop here. Um, this is a, a series I want to start. Just, I thought this would be an interesting concept of uh, just ASMR, but the ASMR creator just talking about something they really like. And I think, I think that's kind of what a huge thing with my channel is is you guys just like that I'm passionate about videos and cameras and pictures and stuff so why not make like a video that's completely dedicated to that even though like all my videos kind of already have that aspect but I just thought it would be interesting I'm also uh, not using my headphones and until I get a new pair because uh, I don't know what happened to those headphones of mine but um, the one side wasn't nearly as loud as the other so I'd find myself like listening as I'm recording, overcompensating to the side that sounded quieter. And then whenever I was editing and post that side, I was in that ear like way too much. And uh, like, I'd just irritate myself when I was editing. I can't imagine it wasn't irritating to watch. <laughs> um, so yeah, but I just want to talk about all my cameras today. So I have quite the collection behind me, minus one, which is the one I'm using to film me. But luckily I have uh, an identical camera as it behind me so I think we'll start with uh, actually no I'm gonna start with my Graham's old film cameras because that's the whole reason I got into using the kind of cameras that I do with the Fuji film cameras with the retro aesthetic they look like they're like 50s uh, DSLR or 50s SLRs so we'll talk a little bit about different kinds of cameras too um, but by the way I'm using a black pro mist filter and um, it's giving the the highlights in the background this kind of dreamy look. I hope you're seeing seeing that. Um, but this is my grandma's camera. I think I've showed this on the channel definitely once or twice before. Um, man, this lens is perfect for this video. So yeah, this is a just it's like some off-brand SLR Chinon. I don't think it was like a huge huge brand or whatever. But it's still really cool because if you flip this up, you can open up the back, and that's where your film used to go. Back in the days where there was no digital cameras, the film would go in there. And you'd put this spool down. And to twist to your next film slide, you had this thing right here. And then you'd take your picture. Now most of these cameras um, are completely uh, manual, meaning there's no, it's all like mechanical parts in there. There's, uh, it does accept a battery, but that's just for the light meter, which will kind of suggest to you if your picture's over or underexposed because you obviously don't have like a digital sensor that's showing you whether it's over or underexposed. So people really had to rely on the light meter or other tools like that. Um, yeah, just so satisfying that sound. This lens isn't fast focusing enough. <laughs> Trying to keep up. This is an older lens that I'm using to film this, so the autofocus is not the the most state of the art, you know. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. This is called an SLR style camera, and these had a mirror in them. Here, I'll unscrew the lens. Lenses used to just be a screw mount. Now there's like it clicks in, but if you look in there, come on, let's get the focus going. If you look in there, you'll see that mirror. It's probably pretty dirty. And uh, whenever you twist this and you hit the button, you'll see the mirror will flip out of the way super quick. And how quick it does it depends on your shutter speed or how fast or how long your film is going to be exposed. So this goes up to a thousandth of a second. 
it has these dials on top for your shutter speed and you can get it all the way down to one second let's see you'll see it'll stay up a lot longer whatever the mirror flips ready or you can even have it set to B. I don't know what that stands for, but whenever you do B and you hold the shutter down, it stays up as long as you hold it down. And then as soon as you let up, there. But uh, I physically had this mirror and that would reflect the image coming through your lens up into your viewfinder. This is an optical viewfinder. And then whenever you took the picture, the mirror flips out of the way and it exposes your film. And that's basically how um, these cameras, I mean, obviously, uh, the very first cameras were more rudimentary than that, but, um, these were a pretty simple design if you think about it. I mean, film, the film itself was the more complex part, and, I mean, this was a pretty, these are pretty amazing, all the little mechanical parts and stuff, but, um, like, the film was just as, if not more important than the actual camera. Like, you could take great film and put it in almost any camera as long as it had a decent lens i guess and get good results back in those days and this is the second kind of camera that my grandma had and i have the like a modern version of these kind of cameras so that first one i showed you was a film slr and this is called a rangefinder style camera it also has the spool here it's not nearly as uh you know let's just listen it's so much less intimidating. The, the clunk is not there. But I just love, this camera's like the perfect little size. I wish there was, uh, Fujifilm made like a, a more modern like version of this size. It's so cute, isn't it? I think it's a fixed lens, so you can't take the lens off, but it doesn't have a mirror in there. You see that the, the viewfinder is over here on this, this side. And uh, these rangefinder cameras, God, I'm messing this focus up so bad. These rangefinder style cameras have two lenses, and that's the lens you look through, and then your actual lens and it'll have it'll be a little bit off especially as you get close to the camera the image that you're seeing through your viewfinder lens and the image that your actual lens is seeing it could be pretty different so but the advantage back in the day was the size of these and uh, I still I still love it and now with like modern cameras where you can have an electronic viewfinder instead of an optical viewfinder and, and you can actually see what the lens sees I I love this style of camera more nowadays um, but let's get into like the actual modern stuff so right here this is my fujifilm xt3 in black i'm filming on my silver one and this is what i do all of my videos with because it's just a beast of a video camera and a photography camera it's great for both and you hear that buzzing i should turn that off i need to try to remember now that i have a mini fridge in the studio um i need to try to remember to unplug that every time i film i kind of forgot there um but anyway yeah xt3 here i love it you can see it basically looks just like the first camera i showed you it's in the style of a film slr camera even though it's it's a mirrorless camera so um it's not even a dslr which came after film slrs it was just it had a digital sensor but still the mirror and everything and the mirrorless cameras get rid of the mirror which makes the lens go up closer to your image sensor and gives you higher image quality um, and then it has instead of the mirror the only reason the mirror was there is for the optical viewfinder so you could see what was in the lens but these just have an electronic viewfinder so it shows you what's hitting the sensor um, and then you can judge your exposure easier because you're actually seeing the final product but just in case you're curious Right there is what the inside of a mirrorless camera looks like. No mirror, just straight image sensor. Isn't it glorious? Love it. Love it. By the way, guys, if you like this back backdrop, this is the backdrop I've been using on my Matt Jacobs channel when I'm talking about uh, cameras. I'm doing reviews on cameras and lenses and stuff, but yeah, it's pretty cool. The great thing about this X-T3 too is it also copies the dials that the, the first camera had you can lock them into place and then choose your shutter speed here or this is your ISO your ISO and then your shutter speeds on this side has a zoom lens on it okay next up I kind of have like the little brother to the camera I just showed you but the older version of it the way Fuji releases their cameras is uh, 
there's a whole bunch of lines, but the two lines I'm most interested in are like this kind of style of a camera. And it's XT1 number line and XT2 number line. So the XT3 is in the one number line. There's XT1, 2, and 3. It's obviously the third generation. There's an XT4 and an XT5 coming out soon. Um, and then the, there's XT10, 20, and 30, which are like the little brothers of the perspective. Like the 10 is a little brother to the 1, the 20 is a little brother to the 2. I have the XT10 here. So it's like the little brother to the camera I just showed ancestor <laughs> but it's just like a little mini version of it you can see it's smaller this grip makes it look a little bit bigger but without the grip it's it's really tiny and I like to match it with this tiny little lens and I just love this thing the great thing about the Fujifilm cameras is they all have the same size image sensor uh, depending on how old they are they might have a different megapixel count but they all take amazing images whether or not they're the big flagship version or the small version like this um, this one's not nearly as premium of a feeling as the X-T3. There's like more plasticky parts and then you can't like lock your dials in place and uh, it can't do video nearly as well, but it still has a flippy screen back here. So if you're taking a picture and uh, maybe like real down low, you can look at the screen or if up top, you can go like that. But I just love this little thing, especially for the size. I had another camera that was also small as well but it was like too plasticky it was the fujifilm xm1 which is like the lowest quality body that they make but it still has great image quality and i ended up just getting this because it was the same size but it felt nicer in my hand and then finally this is the x pro one there's an x pro 3 out now so this is i get a lot of older cameras used um, anyone who's interested in getting into photography i recommend getting a used camera um, I don't know much about other camera brands, but I know Fujifilm specifically has great used cameras. Like that one I just showed takes great pictures, was $300 used without the lens. Um, I also have a nice wooden grip on this. This is my Fujifilm X Pro 1. So this is the, you can see the, the rangefinder style. It has that, uh, that optical viewfinder. And the cool thing about this camera is you'll, if you pay attention to that optical viewfinder, you can see through it there. And I flip this switch, I guess I have to, you see it going out there. I can't really show you too easily, but what's happening is um, it has the optical viewfinder, like the old range style. And you flip this switch and then a electronic viewfinder goes into place. Let me take a picture of you. Oh, do I have an SD card in here? Yeah, apparently I do. Okay, I just took a picture of the camera. <laughs> um, but yeah, I love this camera. It's like 10 years old, so it's a little bit slow, but great image quality. This is the first version of the X-Trans. I just realized I have my glasses up. I have to do that every time I take a picture. Um, this has the earliest version of the Fujifilm X-Trans sensor, which is uh, a sensor that, like the different generations of the sensor, like this has X-Trans 1, X-T10 has X-Trans 2. The, my X-T3s have an X-Trans 4, but that's just like the iteration of that. But it's a special kind of sensor that no other camera manufacturer really uses. Um, but yeah. I'm about all camera out. <laughs> I thought I would be able to go strong for this one, but I'm like tired about talking, talk, tired of talking about cameras now that I have my other channel as well, like doing reviews on them. So I hope this was good. I hope you liked just hearing me talk about something that I like and you thought it was like a nice little show and tell. It didn't feel a lot like ASMR. It was just like constant talking and then maybe a sound every once in a while, but it's new age ASMR, all right? It's still ASMR, trust me. Uh, I hope you enjoyed nonetheless, and uh, you got something out of this, and you just, uh, I don't know. If you're anything like me, you'll really appreciate, like the photography and cameras are a lot of that tradition, and that's why these Fujifilm cameras, uh, the reason I showed you those old film cameras first is so you could see the resemblance in these newer Fujifilm cameras like they take a page out of those old cameras book and you know they really um, just emulate that style really well and I, and I love it so um, I hope you thought that was cool I click the aperture ring this is great for ASMR this one has the best aperture ring Yeah, there we go. That little lens right there on an X-T3 has great autofocus and um, 
Yeah, that's what I use for a lot of my ASMR videos in front of the black backdrop and just anything with uh, visuals usually that's not with the complete like wide angle lens. I use this little guy. I love this lens. Um, and it's a rangefinder style lens. That's why I have it on this camera. But you can just see like the way it kind of like narrows out is so it stays out of the way of your optical viewfinder. Anyway, completely camera out, cameraed out. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'll hope to see you in the next video. I hope I was more in both ears this time. I obviously don't have my monitors in, so at least I was in the middle instead of overcompensating to the one side. Uh, hopefully you find this interesting. Leave a like if you did. Leave. I want to hear from you down in the comments. Leave a comment down below, and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.